How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Timeless Steel Garage. Jimmy, back with you. Today, pretty cool, special day, also a little sad. Um, I'm getting ready to sell my wife's 1978 Leyland Clubman Estate wagon. Now this is a real British car, real right hand drive. I believe we're the third registered owners. I'd have to recheck the paperwork, but uh, long story short, we got this car back in Ooh, 2015-ish time frame, and it was described to us as a fully restored Mini, which wasn't the case at all. And over the course of the years that have gone by, I've basically went through the whole car. Um, my brother and I put a brand new engine in it about two years ago. The engine's got less than 100 miles on it. But we had, you know, life changes. We've got a lot of cars here. Um, we've got a two-year-old daughter, and... Uh, my wife just doesn't feel comfortable driving around in the Mini, understandably so. So I think it, we're, we're going to let this one go. Um, I'm thinking we're going to we're going to send it to Bring a Trailer. We might sell it on Bring a Trailer. Um, we're just looking forward to hearing back from them and uh, otherwise inquire with me directly if you're interested in the car. And uh, if it does go live on Bring a Trailer, I'll be sure to let you guys know. But I just wanted to give you an honest look at the car. I haven't even washed it, I haven't vacuumed it. I'm gonna go through the entire car, what it is, what mods have been done, what things have been updated, and then I'm gonna go through the stuff that's wrong with it because there is no classic car that's perfect. I don't care what they say. So, first of all, there she is. 1978 Leyland Clubman Estate. And I know a lot of you are thinking, well, how do you know it's real? Boom, registered with the British Motor Heritage Trust. Real car. No doubt, VIN hasn't been stolen. Also, the original 1098 that came in it, I still have, needs rebuilt with smoke and oil more than gas. Um, the second motor we put in it was a 998 high revving engine. Something mechanically went bad in that one. It still turns over, but it sounds awful. But however, I will include both engines with the car, and I believe there's one spare transmission in there as well. So, anyhow, let's show you the car. We call it Elf, which if you guys are familiar with 80s TV shows, Elf, Alien Life Form, there he is right there. He's, that's the car. He's always been known as Elf. Now the paint we didn't do, we did take some horrible tint off of it. Um, the decal was already on it. Somebody had put stripes on the hood, which you can see just a little bit of ghosting um, from those stripes. It looks like somebody clear coated over with the stripes installed, so there's like more clear coat where the stripes weren't um, but really a very solid um, original car that's been tastefully restored um, when we first got the car it had four wheel drum brakes on it and it was scary to drive I didn't want my wife driving it so the first thing we did was put uh, I put some I believe they're Cooper S brakes I think they're I want to say they're nine and a half inch if that sounds right um, Upgraded the fronts to disc brakes, completely restored the whole front suspension. Um, I put uh, anodized billet aluminum hard mounts on the subframe, so the subframe is directly connected to the car for handling. We wanted to build this car for handling, so we also put uh, um, coil over springs in it and got rid of the factory rubber bump style suspension. And as you can see right down in there, those are the coil overs that we installed. And then you can also see these billet hard mounts I'm talking about right there, the red ones. So the subframe of this car is directly connected. There's no rubber and it handles awesome. Now because of those anodized subframe mounts, you do get buzzing in the hood and stuff like that. But if you look down here, you can see uh, new ball joints. It's got uh, KYB gas adjust shocks on it, um, poly bushings on the front. And I think, I think they're all poly. We rebuilt the CV axles. You can see how new the motor is. Well, while we're talking about the motor, so my brother's company, Evoke, I wanted to throw one of his stickers on it. After having this car for so many years and going through three different engines, I learned a lot about them and we decided to do all the best upgrades at one time. So again, this motor's only got 100 miles on it. I basically broke the motor in, readjusted the valves after 50, and then I gave it to the wife to drive. She drove it like twice. Um, so again, I'll go through what we got here. So it's got a brand new um, ignition solenoid. We replaced the uh, 
battery cables front and back all the way with very thick welding gauge cable it's got a jet motors uh, flamethrower ignition upgrade with the uh, hei distributor um, it's got a modern mini starter on it from jet motors and it's also got jet motors um, modern small alternator those things alone greatly improve this car the charging output and just the power and throttle response after changing that ignition is significant aluminum radiator from jet motors it's got water wetter in it it's got a newer fan on it um the ins this motor is a 1250 which is was the biggest engine you could get for minis back then um it does have a street cam in it a mild street cam and it does have roller rockers in it um the short block was professionally rebuilt by a well-known engine builder out west and then i basically installed the top end and the rest of the motor now the transmission was sent off to jet motors for professional rebuild i had them gear it for highway so this car will comfortably cruise at 65 miles an hour um, which is pretty fast for one of these old cars and it still has plenty to get up and go around town you can see it's got a mini sport um, shift arm it's got the adjustable um, shift rod um, the clutch the flywheel everything is, is race spec in there from jet motors i have the receipts to prove all that obviously all new ignition um, mini spares intake it's got a manaflow header on it um, brand new uh, su car we we had a good carb on it but with the new engine i didn't even want to mess with it anymore so i got this carb from jet motors as well can and intake you'll notice a trend here i get a lot of stuff from jet motors his name's germany he's a phenomenal guy uh, if you ever need anything reach out to him which you can see steel braided clutch line everything in here is basically brand new i even restored the factory windshield washer system that didn't work before the brake system i've just went through recently and serviced and changed all the fluid in um and i think that's pretty much everything up here under the hood the horns work it all works you can see here the stuff that makes it a real british car it's got a commission number on it austin morris group british leyland vin um it's it's original and as far as i can tell the grill and the bumpers and all that kind of stuff uh came with the car and this under spray liner that's on the car was actually ordered by the original owner there's a receipt that i have that shows that so the whole car has been sprayed when it was new and it really preserved the car so we'll continue around here we'll go into the interior now obviously like i said i haven't i haven't cleaned this girl up or anything yet so there's some crumbs and dirt in here um the previous owner had the seats and everything restored um they don't adjust forward or back or anything they do have some adjustment points here you can see one two three we have it on the middle seating so you could move it back about an inch or jet motors sells a uh, adjustment kit now one of the big things i did recently on this car if you guys are many people you know that the steering shafts once they start vibrating it's really bad news for the rack um, so it's got a brand new steering rack in it which is probably the worst job to do on a mini um, the window cranks all work good um, the side panels have all been restored. You can see the headliner is phenomenal. Sun visors have these covers on them. I'm not a big fan of them. It looks like they just put like a leather wrapped cover around the original one, so it makes them kind of saggy. Um, it's got a Mountune GT Britain steering wheel on it. I put a Bosch tack in here. Um, somebody at some point, the previous owner I imagine, had put this wood dash in it. Had a professional Sony stereo in it. Now, I'll say that the stereo was probably awesome 10 years ago um you can see the speakers and everything back there it works great it's just you know a little old um the fan blowers all that stuff works the hazards light hazard light works the heater works great in this car it'll burn you out i did put a brand new a locking choke in so the car is phenomenal to start in fact i'll just go ahead and show you that now choke on it's just under 2000 rpm choke off she idles and putters all day one thing that needs to be done here is this uh the shift uh the left and right the whole assembly works but the little plastic that keeps it centered on the steering column is broke these are cheap replacements um i just haven't gotten around to doing it again the, the wipers and the hazards everything works it just 
you can see the whole assembly wants to move you see that right turn stock it's just kind of annoying simple fix you can buy those brand new um some of the things i did when restoring the car my brother and i actually did we took the entire shifter box out of the car and rebuilt it bushings greased it all that kind of stuff and then we installed a short throw shifter with an aluminum shift knob in the process greatly improved drivability um, and this is also the the much wanted and everybody wants the rod change gearbox so instead of having it's actually got physical rods going to the gearbox um, and again when that transmission was re rebuilt it was all new pot joints cv axles everything this drive line has 100 miles on it whoever buys this car it's ready to drive i wouldn't hesitate to drive this to a mini event across the country uh, e-brake works great um, it's got a glove box in it. I usually keep spare spark plugs and insurance registration in there. Um, the vents work. Uh, let me see what else we got here. So the back seat actually folds down. Uh, in, in the UK, they actually use these as delivery trucks. Um, you can see there's speakers at the base of the seats. Sony explode and then they're also in the side sills. There's these little map pockets on each side of the seat Which is handy. I usually put coolant or oil in here for road trips um, This is pretty cool. They have these slide um, bread van style windows if I can get the If I can get my one hand to do it here, they're pretty firm, but they slide back. Let me see here There we go There you see so Passengers actually get some 80 mile an hour air conditioning back here. This is a non AC car, so you're just going to get wind cooling. Um, the headliner is phenomenal. The dome light works. Again, the one thing that the previous owner did do a good job of was at least restoring the interior. Mechanically, I've went through the entire car because he didn't do a good job of that. Um, back of the car, again, it's it's drum brakes on the back, but I've serviced them. The brakes are phenomenal on this car. They're good to go. Um, it came with a locking gas cap, which we all know those don't work that well. So I put a regular gas cap on it and a new gas tank seal. Um, the rear doors work great. Again, delivery truck. And you can see that uh, it's a real UK car. In fact, to put a plate on here, I usually just rivet my wife's license plate in there so I didn't drill any new holes. You can see the British plate holes right here now again the seat folds down um, your spare tire and everything is located underneath which has these little locks to keep it uh, closed super fun little car um, she's got like a little picnic basket in here and the British flags um, but interior paint on this car is is great I it really it has a couple little dents um, that need addressed it's got a reproduction Leyland stripe on it. Here's really the worst part of the car is it's got a dent here and a dent there and a scratch. Now I reached out to a paintless dent repair guy and he, he could easily fix that. So these dents can be pulled without bodywork or paint. I've replaced the side mirrors because the stock ones rattled so bad you couldn't really see out of them, but they're adjustable, they're fine, good to go. So really everything on this car works, everything. Um, if you know these minis, you know the heater valves are a pain. This one's adjusted and it doesn't leak, which is a feat in itself. Um, now I will say it's a British car. If you're not familiar with classic minis, the engines are built loose. So when you first start them up in the morning, they do puff a little smoke. This car has the original exhaust. Well, it was replaced at some point, but from the header back, um, it was the exhaust that was on the car when the original motor was blowing oil so the exhaust is just full of garbage so um and once it gets hot it stops blowing that garbage out but it uh one thing that i would do if i kept this car is put a new exhaust on it just to get one that isn't full of oil from a blown engine um but like i said everything works these SU carburetors are phenomenal, so easy to service. You change the oil, you pull the dash pot out, you put a little of the oil in there. It, the 20W50 on these motors and the transmission in the engine shares the same oil. It's actually one of the first, you know, minis are the original creators of the transverse front wheel drive car. And so this is known as a power unit. Um, but you can see all the hoses are new. I mean, this thing, if whoever buys this car, it's ready to drive. Um, or I wouldn't put my name on it. 
The other thing, another thing that needs to be replaced is uh, somebody had put a cheap plastic antenna on here and the top of the antenna broke off. You can get these for like 10 bucks. Um, windshield wipers work. Like I said, she's ready to drive. It's just my wife doesn't drive it. The only other thing that I would say is the tires are old and they're starting to crack and show dry rot. So, you know, the antenna, the tires, I would put a new exhaust on it down the road, but it's fine the way it is. And the little dents on the door, those are the negatives with the car. Um, now I'm gonna show you, before we take it for a drive, I'm gonna show you the engines that go with it. Excuse the mess in the garage here. Got my daughter's car and a bunch of other stuff in the way. But, let me get some light so you guys can see. I have preserved these engines, they're wrapped. So there you can see, that's the 1098, that's the original motor. And then back here, wrapped is the 998 with another transmission under it. Transmission shifted fine. So if one, if somebody wanted to do it, they could take the original 1098, that original transmission, which the transmission under that block is original to this motor, uh, rebuild those to make them new and, and have the car completely numbers matching again. So the numbers matching drivetrain does come with the car car is a lot of fun to drive a lot of fun to drive let me get a suction cup so I can stick you on the windshield welcome back all right so I'm six feet tall and I do have to worry about what kind of shoes I wear when I drive this thing however I fit just fine now if this wasn't my wife's car I'd buy some adjustable seat brackets and I would move the seat back a little bit. Now I will say the passenger side, I'm six foot tall and the passenger side is unbelievably comfortable. Um, I sit over there and it's a much different feel on the passenger seat. Now I have had my whole family in this car. I've had four adults in this car and driven to a car show, won an award and came back. Something I forgot to mention, this thing's won quite a bit of awards. Um, I'll try to remember to show them at the end of the video. I don't even know if I have them all out here displayed, but. The only thing that gets more attention than a DeLorean is a classic Mini, especially a brown estate wagon with a Clubman front end. Those Corvette guys ain't got nothing on this. So let's go for a drive. You see she starts right up. Now I did obviously warm it up a little bit, um, but it doesn't take that long to warm up this car. Apparently I didn't warm it up enough. All right. So the shift pattern in this thing, it's up and left is first, down and left is second, up and right is third, down and right is fourth. And then to go in reverse, you have to physically lift the whole shifter rod, go right over the gate and back to reverse. So it's a little different. The old e brake. All right, here we go. The clutch travel, too, is like really short in these cars, it's like an inch. Um, but again, this has a lightened flywheel in it and a performance clutch, and significantly better drive than stock. I, I hated the way this thing drove stock, and this 1250cc engine with this uh, jet performance redone transmission great drive. There we go, 4,000 RPM, second gear, and we're cruising. Right now I'm at 3,000 RPM and 30 miles an hour, climbing up a hill no problem. Now I will say, I'm gonna put this window up so you guys can hear me. I will say that um, one of the huge differences between this modern electric ignition and, and the original point setup is the ability to climb hills. Um, the stock ignition struggled with that any mini owner will tell you that. So we're gonna get out on the road here. All right, 4,000 RPM, 25 miles an hour. Second gear, 3,000 RPM. Climbing, climbing, climbing. 4,000 RPM, shift to third, we're at 40 miles an hour. Now I'm at third, 3,000 RPM, 40, 3,500 RPM, 45 miles an hour. It'll cruise at about 4,000 RPM at 60 to 65. It'll go faster than that, uh, but you're kind of winding it out. So red line on this motor is 6,000 with the valve train I have built in it. Um, 
I put premium in it, tried it, ethanol free always because it's old school carburetor set up and we all know what ethanol does to, uh, to fuel seals, right? So luckily I have a few gas stations in town that have ethanol free. Um, I like to run Valvoline uh, VR1 racing oil in it. Real popular in the dirt track circuit, especially for people running regular old school cams. Keeps the cams from getting round off. Everywhere I go with this thing, people wave. There's the horn. I try to wipe, when I pass people and they're like struggling, you can see the struggle in their face trying to figure out what this car is. I honk the horn at them and it makes them smile and laugh all the time. It's a clown car. So backcountry roads, this thing is phenomenal. You get on the highway, it's a right lane kind of car. You know, you're doing 65 miles an hour, let the people go past you. It's about the journey, not the speed, right? Um, but another thing is, this car, the original motor, it liked to overheat. Um, with this new aluminum three-core, I think it's a three-core radiator, and the water wetter in it, um, it doesn't overheat. It'll start to get a little hot if it sits in traffic for a long time. Once you start moving, it cools it right back down. So this new motor is phenomenally better at cooling. Um, like right now, I'm not even at the middle of the gauge with all the driving we've been doing. But as I'm talking to you here, I'm at uh, 3,000 RPM in fourth gear and I'm doing 50 miles an hour. And man, she handles like a rocket. And I'll tell you, like this car is not that fast, right, at high speeds, but when you're on a country road, you know, with 50 mile an hour speed signs and, and you're going around curves or stoplight to stoplight, this thing's pretty quick and it's a lot of fun. Um, we set this car up to do, uh, we wanted to, I wanted my, I was living up in New York at the time and my wife wanted to do a track day at Watkins Glen. So originally I set the car's suspension up and, and the whole build design around getting to take it around one of those vintage car circuit uh, events at, at Watkins Glen. Unfortunately, we never got to do that. Military gets in the way sometimes. But uh, anyways, it's a phenomenal car. We're both going to be sad to see it go, but uh, my wife's got a 65 Riviera that means more to her and that we need to restore. So we're going to sell this car and put all the money into the, her 65 Riviera. And uh, I think you know, I just, I'd like to see it. She'd like to see it go to someone that's gonna appreciate it. Um, this car is incredibly rare. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I believe it was only made from 77 to 79. Somebody correct me. And I wanna say it's only 1,200 cars that were the Clubman front end, real British right-hand drive estate wagons. So this car is actually significantly rare compared to even the DeLorean that I own. And when we do take it to events that have other minis on it, other mini people genuinely freak out about this car. Um, you're either into these vans or you're not. Uh, me personally, I like the club in front end better. And I like the van because being six foot tall, this car is actually usable to me. I sit in a regular mini and I just feel a little claustrophobic in there. Um, but that's pretty much it. And I hope you enjoyed the drive. If you've got any questions about the car, feel free to message me, leave a comment on the channel and hey, I know I ask you guys all the time, but if you're somebody that just happened to tune in and look at my channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Every little bit helps and helps me keep bringing these videos that some of you like to watch. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Time will steal. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you some of the awards. So this is where she lives. She's got a nice home. Shaylin's Mini lives here in front of it. Um, always in the garage. This car's never been outside or in the rain since we've owned it. Um, but you can see we care about the car. That's why I won this award, Lake Helen, Florida, April 26, 2014. We did an event in uh, Clayton, New York in 2015 at a Concord de Elegance where the car did really well. Uh, we won an award in Clayton 2015. Here's one from the previous owner back to April 26, 2008. Um, there's another one up here, first place. April 24th, 2010, another, uh, that's a uh, Antique Automobile Club of America award. The glass, this award, and this award were the previous owners. Um, but we love this car, and we want to see it go to a good home. So I'll let you guys know if I end up putting it on Bring a Trailer. Uh, if not, just hit me up direct, and uh, once I put it on the auction site, I'll post the link to the auction um, in this video. See you later.